going to start doing some videos kind of in between case studies, um, kind of showing some basic setup stuff for mainly Pico 7. Uh, I know what you're seeing here is Pico 6, but what I want to talk about today is sample rate. To me, it's the, it's the most important thing to get right because the reason you're using the scope is to catch a glitch. And if you don't have the sample rate set up correctly, you could still miss it. So I want to start laying a foundation with the sample rate. I'm going to call this sample rate uh, Mike's setting. And what, what that entails is 500 milliseconds per division, five mega samples. So what does that mean? Each little block is a half a second or 500 milliseconds. So that means our, and there's 10 blocks. So this is a five second screen. There are five million samples on this screen. And the rate is one million samples per second. So two blocks, I have a million samples. And in order to achieve that is the most important number is the sample interval is one microsecond. Now you don't have to do all this math in your head because if you watch that number, it's live. So as I change this number, you can see it moving around. Or if I change this number, it moves around for you. Um, so th think, about, uh, think about fishing with a net. How big of holes do you need in your net depending on what you're trying to catch? Well, we're trying to catch automotive signals. So the ideal net that we want to use is about a one microsecond hole or one microsecond sample interval. Uh, this would be the, the, the size of net we want to use. Um, we can go in here and change this. And if we add more time, well, that affects our sample interval. That essentially just made our hole bigger. So we're, we possibly could miss stuff. If we went real big, you can see that the holes really got big. This is something you had to constantly deal with with Pico 6. And uh, that's why I'm illustrating it, because I'm going to show you where Pico 7 made a nice improvement. So let's say we want to shorten the time base. Well, now we've decreased the size of the holes in our net. I know 200 is bigger than 1, but now we're in nanoseconds versus microseconds. You're not going to miss a glitch with this setting, but what you're going to do is you're going to catch too much stuff. Uh, your net's going to get clogged faster, and you're going to have to empty it, meaning your buffer size here. So you notice 3 of 3 at that rate, but if I were to back off the sample rate or the sample interval and get it back up here to ideal, now look how many buffers we have. We have 31, and we still have a good sample interval. So just want to show you that and lay a foundation, and now we're going to move over to Pico 7. So I'm going to close that. And we've got that crazy screen. And let's open 7. And as soon as this opens, it, you, you'll see the default setting. If you actually had your scope hooked up, it would show up here. It would say 4425 or whatever scope you're using. You would click on it and then hit OK. Uh, I don't have a scope hooked up, so we're just going to run the demo mode. But it, it all work. everything I'm showing you is going to work the same. Now, this is our demo. This is default. When you open your program, this is what it's going to default to. It's going to have a trigger on. It's going to have a very small amount of time on the screen. And we click there. But the one microsecond is, is, a, is a good sample interval. But if you look, if I want to go a little more time on the screen and approach Mike's settings, well, we've just made the holes in our net bigger. So we're going to have to change that. So how do you change it on... Pico 7. Well, you've got to come up here to sampling. And you've got to start adding the number of samples. Because we want to really step on the gas a little bit. And let's get it 
back to the way we want it. So 5 million samples or 1 million samples per second. And now we're back to one US or one microsecond. And just like Pico 6, if I go change in time basis, then I've got to go back up here and readjust this. It's kind of a pain. What Pico 7 has done is they have gave us another option, which I think is freaking awesome. So I'm going to show you that. When you first open this up, it defaults to buffer memory. We're going to call that Pico 6 mode. What I want you to do is change this over to sample rate. Go to custom. Now we're going to go to our 500. And you can see the holes in our net are a bit small, so we want to go ahead and change that. So let's back that down one. And now we're back to mic settings. Now, being that we took it out of buffer memory and we put it to sample rate, now when we move this around, it stays put. That is a great, great feature. The only problem with that is when you close out the scope, it's going to default back to the way it was, unless you do a few more things, and that's what I'm going to show you. So we're going to go here to more. Now any of these little things over here are over here. If you want it over here, put a star beside it. If you don't like it over here, take the star away. So let's go to settings. Let's put this thing in user. It always defaults to factory. Let's go to user. You can change that if you'd like. Uh, hold, watch your eyes real quick but if you want the light mode or the dark mode there's that button you could put the panel over there or over here and um, it defaults to US now two more things you have to do because you have to save this so we're gonna go up here to save well first off what I want to do is I want to turn this trigger off because if I'm going to save a good setup, I don't want a trigger on there. Because what I'm trying to do when I'm hooking the scope up is I want to get squiggly lines on my screen. If I have a trigger set up and I don't have it triggering in the right spot, you could pull your hair out because the scope won't draw a line. And it may just because the line hasn't met the trigger point. So I say this. Get the basics on your screen then start adjusting things and adding triggers and, and all that good stuff that comes with using the scope. But focus, you know, when you're starting out using this, let's just focus on getting lines on the screen. So we have to save it. So let's save this. We want to open this up and we want to save user default PS settings. And now we're going to save it. I want you to save this twice and I'm going to show you why. So there it is. Now, if you've done those steps, if you close this out, which let's just do that, and now we open it back up, it's going to default to mic settings. And now you don't have to play the Pico 6 game with always monitoring, monitoring the sample interval. So there we go. No trigger. That's a five second screen and we have one microsecond and then we can adjust and tailor from there and not ever have to worry about that going too big or too small. Now I want you to save this one more time and I'm going to show you why. Let's go to save. Now this time drop this down and save it under PS settings file. Now it wants to default to this weird folder here. I don't know, it's hard to find this folder. So what I would recommend is you go ahead and browse. I usually put stuff right on my desktop. And then I'm going to change the name of it. I'm going to type in Mike settings.
and then hopefully this will save right on my desktop and let's see uh, yeah there it is so why did we do that well let's say you're you're testing along there and uh, you want to check a crankshaft sensor and you need a little help with the setup well this thing has guided component tests in it um, the they're here to, to help you I'm not always keen on the setup but as far as the the time and things like that so let's see let's go in here I don't use this very often let's let's say we want to check a crankshaft position sensor um, unless you're working on really something really really old we're Hall effect God and settings file so you could kind of read down through here a lot of information kind of how to hook it up an example waveform lots of cool stuff in there and then after you set it up and you hit go which I can't because I'm actually not hooked to a car but it's going to work the same it sets you up on a 20 millisecond per division which is not a lot of screen time um, its sample rate is 200 nanoseconds so basically the holes in the net are really small uh, this thing's gonna catch a lot of stuff you can actually see it here there's a lot of noise in there so use the power of the scope the beauty of the scope is you can use long 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 time bases and the scope can still capture wonderful detail so a lot of different ways to get back to Mike's settings you can go up here let's say the screens running you've got your capture going on you can go in here and change your time base while it's live but remember it is defaulted to buffer memory it's in Pico 6 mode so if you get to change in this time base and not knowing it you're going to change your sample interval you're gonna make the holes in the net bigger and you could miss something that you are looking for so what I would do is let's go up here to open let's browse and let's find mic settings let's go ahead and double click that your scopes already hooked up now this bad dude is going to now set you back up where you need to be now you may have to go in here you don't want a hundred volt scale you could use it but you don't need it you would have to buy your crank sensor runs you know 0 to 12 so you're gonna to want to back it down to a 20 and if you have other things that you're looking at you know if you have to ID a probe or if you're using one of the new 4425 A's it's gonna ID itself as soon as you plug it in you may have to tell it no I'm not using an amp clamp I'm using a regular a lead and then you can go into turn on C and D if that's what you're using um, but the beauty of it is and the main thing is this sample rate is gonna be good okay so this works perfect this mic settings that I keep referring to works perfect for everything but can if you get into networking then you're gonna have to change some stuff around um, I'll do videos on that later down the road right now I want to get just the basic get some lines on the screen get some usable measurable lines on the screen and then we'll go from there uh, I do have videos already out on setting up for can if you want to check those out I would appreciate it um, future topics uh, the next topic I'm gonna do is triggering I'm gonna record some stuff live in the shop and then kind of do a little video like this probably using a demo mode but I'm gonna focus on Pico 7 so uh, any ideas you guys want to uh, throw my way use the comment section on YouTube I'm on Facebook Carter's Diagnostics um, I mean a couple of the Nissan master groups uh, Nissan Infinity technician groups on Facebook so I'm pretty easy to find if you want to throw, throw suggestions out there but I hope this takes off like I said I'm probably gonna make a playlist and just put all these little beginner startup new to the scope style videos in that and then keep my case studies in a separate spot but enjoy the video and uh, you guys have a good one and remember drag that scope out the only way to learn is to use it